Hi there, it's Tim again, Cigar City Garage. This trip here, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about ladder bars and ladder bar location. I know a lot, there's a lot of companies out there sell a lot of different ladder bars, but they never really explain what you need, lengths to use, stuff like that. And I'll talk about a couple of the little companies out there that I buy product from, show you a little bit of what we do and what's going on in the shop. So here we go. As you'll see, this is Henry J number two, okay? This chassis is completely finished. As I said before, I pull them off the jig and weld them up completely before I start mounting anything in them. With the exception of the door axes, I leave them loose, I take them out. Just makes it easier to do tin work, mount the seats and all that other stuff and then weld them in later on. So they're fit and the car's not gonna move around this way, so pretty good. We got the Falcon sitting back here on the jig. I'll, we got the frame rails and stuff and the outriggers in it. I'll talk a little bit about that, but let's talk about ladder bars. These bars that I build myself are about 48 inches long from axle center line to the center of the front hind, which is where your instant center point is on a ladder bar. Four link cars, you can move that around you know with the location of the upper and lower bars you can move the instant center in or out or up or down a lot more adjustment there but in most of these gasser groups they don't want you running four link so we stick to ladder bars a lot of cars that are out there you know they've put a little bit of science into where the front point goes and I'm gonna try to make it real simple for you on a approximation of where the hind joint or your center of adjustments should be with a ladder bar car in relationship to <clears throat> the center of gravity and what we call the neutral line and I'm hoping you can see this line right here I've got a string that is approximately the center of the rear axle on the ground to where the bumper would be on this car in the front. A lot of guys pick camshaft heights. You can do that too. Uh, center of the camshaft in the front of the car is a good starting point. It's you know some of them it's pretty high. Like what we're doing, that's a pretty high point. So I try to use like in most everything behind the front bumper. Just keep that in mind. Behind the front bumper doesn't matter the height of the car. These things here are pretty high, you know, we're building 13 inch rocker heights here, you know, 13 inches from the ground to the bottom of the rocker, that's what most of these groups want. And I'm trying to build Sega legal cars here, so, but most of the groups want that. You know, they want a high car, they don't want the motor dragon on the ground, look like a pro mod, so. In turn, what that determines for you, a neutral line is, if your pivot and or your instant center is on that line it's going to try to lift up the middle of the car it's not going to try to lift up the front end it's going to try to lift up the rear end it just it tries to pick the car up in the middle of the car like in the center of gravity above that line causes the rear end to separate below that line causes the rear end to squat the rear end of the car that is um, Rear end to squat, lift the front end of the car up. Rear end to separate, keeps the nose of the car down, but plants the tire harder. So those are your, like your range of adjustment, which I will talk about more later on. So what you're looking for basically is this heim joint to be on the center of that line when you build your car. And like I say, up above that causes separation, down below that causes squat. And that's what you're looking for when you determine where those brackets go in that cross member right there. Most of the brackets that you buy won't fit. You'll have to modify them and I'll show you a little bit on the Falcon back there what we had to do with that. Um, like I say, ladder bar lengths. I told you what I build 
And I build these because most of the stuff that I build in here is going to have eight or 900 horsepower. So, well, let's call it 650 and up, okay? A longer ladder bar will be less violent than a short ladder bar. Most of uh, the stuff you buy 32, 36 inches long were designed for subcompact cars like Falcons or Camaros or whatever so that it's not, you know, underneath the driver's seat or get you a little bit of room in the car. And, and those bars work really well for mild small block combinations or, you know, even a real mild big block. Up to 500 horsepower, 32 to 36 inch ladder bars, just fine. This stuff here, I'm trying to err on a side of safety because I know these guys can afford to put bigger motors in these things and they just work well. In previous videos I showed the jumping jack flash. This is the same ladder bar I used in jumping jack flash and that car has gone 620s already. You know, pretty pretty competitive sea gas car so. Um, that's what I got going on with this one. This rear end and ladder bar package um, was, I used it to build the first chassis and I didn't even take it off the jig. I just left it there and it will help me relocate the front brackets for car number two for Greg. So that's how I determine when I'm putting together where the ladder bar is supposed to go. Like I say, sometimes the brackets work, sometimes they don't. And you know there's some stuff out there and I'm gonna design some of my own too that can be available if you need them I, I typically I don't build and sell ladder bars the company that I like to use if I'm buying them for the longer stuff is checkered racing they build a real nice bar kit so that's that's my recommendations there it's try to stick to something four foot long things not to do okay You'll see these guys building gassers with the ladder bars that go all the way up to the front wheels. Underneath the floorboards, you know, that that's just, that don't work. That's, you know, look, does it look cool? Some people think so. I don't. They don't work well. They, they open the, they open up the area for flex and stuff like that and you don't need that. Another thing I've seen is guys build ladder bars where these two bars here, these two bars here are parallel and then the bottom one will kick up like it'll have a kick in it like you would in a street rod car, you know, like in a hairpin or a radius rods. Those don't work either. Triangles are stronger than rectangles. That's what you got to remember. There's some guys out there that'll build them. They use those old Chevelle flat stock ladder bars. Don't. Don't do that. You're wasting your time and your money. Don't. Just those things look cool on a Chevelle but they never ever worked on anything they were junk from the get-go they just people thought they looked cool so as you can see here we're low this is relocating the cross member and I'm gonna try to go through a little bit more of this in another video I know I shared that how to locate the rear end how to locate the cross member I've got my laser set up like I say my string to determine where the ladder bars go in these cars so and I will talk later on about you know how to mount springs and shocks and all that stuff so I don't want to leave any of that stuff out but let's look at the Falcon quick and you can see how I modified those brackets to work like I say these were 32 inch chassis engineering bars and the rails are competition engineering frame rails I used stuff they had. They bought out a speed shop in Tennessee and this was stuff they had. So I'm trying to trying to use that. I got my bracket. You can see this triangulation right here. I built this bracket and it was one that was actually notched to go around a frame rail and it was too high. So I'll give you a little better side shot here. See that? It was really too high. So we just filled in the front of it to get it to bump up underneath the frame rail and therein to get that adjustment point where we needed it so that the car would work right. And then the triangulation, that triangle piece there will help strengthen the frame up because you've got that step over there will make it'll want to make a weak point right there in the middle. So but we've you know done similar to the Henry J. Frame rails are located in this car in in relation to where 
his axle um, the spring perch center line was I think these are like 29 and a half that's where that's where they were on the original axle and we're gonna reuse it so that's how I determine the location or the width of these frame rails here so you'll notice I don't have anything out underneath the front end the platform inside is all level and what I do is I'll put the roll cage in and everything get all that braced up and then once that's done I'll come out front here and I'll level these rails because these rails are probably about a quarter of an inch off in the front and I can push them up or pull them down and do whatever I want to do and then I'll put my forward strut tubes in in the triangulation there to hold these in place so that's where we're at there like I say this one's done I'm using it now for the blueprint for car number two I've written down a bunch of dimensions and everything else and we've pre-bent tubing like the main hoop and the, the um, hoop supports are done all that stuff's finished and um, I'll use this car plus my notes and build car number two it'll be exactly the same as this one like I say I'm trying to build two identical cars the only thing that will be different is the you know engine transmission combination in them so and I, and I also am trying to build them so that if they decide at some point they want to take the small block Ford out of one car and put a big block Ford in it it's not a major project when you motor plate them that's really hard to do so I'm not going to motor plate these cars then we've got Ronnie's car Ronnie helps me out here in the shop gives me a hand he's been working on this for a few years and since he started here it's lit a fire under him and he's getting pretty close to putting tin work in this I'm gonna try to teach him how to do tin work with this car but he's pretty much done everything himself and he's done a pretty nice job he's um, working on he had some questions in regard to the front end mount it was a little chewy so we're gonna redo this front end mount or he's gonna do it he's working on that now so doing a nice job it's a four-link A-arm car, like an Alston-style chassis, I think, originally, that's been cut on four or five times, and then he's put um, four-link brackets, changed the back end of the car. It was originally a ladder bar car, so he's changed a bunch of that. And she's turning out pretty good, so that's what we got going on here. Like I say, showing you how I make this determination, and I'll walk you through some of the other stuff that I do as we're putting this chassis together sort of reiterate what we're doing how we do it you know locating the dash bar that kind of goofy stuff like I say remember triangles are stronger than rectangles keep it keep it upright thanks for watching